During the late Second World War, Britain produced two excellent fighter bombers, the Typhoon and the Tempest. Today, the RAF has in service the Typhoon and it is starting the adventure to build the Tempest again. Roll the intro! In this video, we are going to have fun! We are going to go through what little information we have about the Tempest program and try making some deductions. So it will be a lot of speculation and I may end up being spectacularly wrong. So watch the video till the end and let me know if you agree. And if you watch the video till the end, YouTube will know that this is a good video and it will show it to other people who may be interested. Fifth generation. But also Well, this is old stuff because around the world the most advanced air forces are already thinking to a sixth generation of jet fighters. There are the Americans, obviously, who claim to have flown a demonstrator already. And there is the FCAS. And there is the FCAS. And there is the FCAS. The and there is the FCAS program involving France, Germany and Spain. And of course, there is the Tempest program, led by Britain and joined by Italy and Sweden. Bonus fact, the Tempest is just a part of a larger program known as FCAS TI, which also included the Lanka drones family and other initiatives. Uh, more on this later. The Tempest program is aimed at delivering by 2035 a very advanced 6th generation fighter. Some say that 14 years are too few, just look at the Americans, the F-35 uh, took 25 years. I personally would argue that the F-35 is not a good example because the USA tried to develop basically three aircraft in one go and the project was explicitly designed to fragment the production among different US states and foreign countries. The resulting program was a sort of a monster, really, really difficult to manage properly. Basically, it was a sure recipe for delays. 14 years is a time not much shorter than the other recent European projects that at the time were no less innovative than the Tempest is supposed to be. An interesting idea is that part of the system that will be used on the Tempest will be deployed as improvements on the Eurofighter first. In this way, when they will be migrated to the Tempest, they will be basically off the shelf. The consortium that coalesced around the Tempest, the so-called Team Tempest, is composed by Biosystems, Rolls-Royce, Leonardo, MBDA, Saab and GKN. Basically, this is the best you can have in Europe if you exclude the French. Among these companies, there is undoubtedly enough expertise to develop the platform. Even more important, it is the actual possibility that very few components of the Tempest will come from outside the countries involved in the consortium. Obviously, this means that there will be no particular limitations to export other than those agreed within the consortium, and the program will be under the sovereign control of the three nations. But that's not everything. This is also a key element to reduce the costs. Even though buying some of the shelf American components may seem cheaper, it is necessary to acquire the foreign currency, the dollars, to do so. I won't get into the details, but the process of acquiring the large amount of dollars required in a project like this may be very expensive and have effects on the whole of the economy. 
the three countries involved are three countries that have a very large differentiation of their production base. And so basically they don't need to buy anything or almost anything. It's boring. No, I was joking. Well, actually, it is not true. It looks very cool, but it doesn't seem very different from any other sixth generation aircraft. We probably need to get used to this. The reason why it looks like any other sixth generation uh, aircraft is the fact that it is stealth. Since the most effective form of stealth is achieved by the shape of the plane, there is a limited number of shapes that provide stealth. This is the reason why 5th and 6th generation fighters basically all look the same. One example, well, the sharp corner on the side of the front fuselage to deflect the radar echo above or below the impinging beam, well, is almost universal. The wing seems to be close to a delta wing according to the European modern tradition, but with no canards, which are a big no-no for stealth because their presence may cause some complex and non-stealthy radar reflections. The sole foot platform on the trailing edge is probably related to stealth too. I suspect the designers wanted to avoid to have a straight line pointed exactly at 90 degrees from the airplane axis and to avoid the consequent tip diffusion effect. The wing aerofoil on a wing like this will probably be nothing really recognizable as such. I expect it to be an aerofoil like that of the Eurofighter with a variable and irregular section. After all, today you have the numeric simulations to assess the performance, you don't need to modify a standard aerofoil anymore. From the mock-up it seems quite a thin wing, but this is something that is probably going to change uh, in the final plane. The absence of canard will probably bring back the classic trim drag issue of the classic deltas, but I expect that the combination of the aerofoil and the high thrust engines will reduce the problem. The designer may also be thinking about using some form of blown boundary layer for control. Biosystem has been experimented with this technology for quite a long time now and they successfully flew a drone demonstrator. Uh, the fuselage is not showing any sign of the area rule and it is a hint that the engine's thrust is expected to guarantee a sufficient transonic and supersonic performance. I expect it to supercruise very very fast and the wind tunnel test so far has been brought up to Mach 2. In the end they're basically thrusting brute force. After the cockpit section, it seems to be a relatively simple box. Definitely doesn't seem to be a lifting body, even if a square fuselage will produce some lift at a high angle of attack. The weapons bay, which uh, by systems calls the flexible weapon bay, will be located in the middle of the fuselage. The drawings are a bit ambiguous on the size and proportion. Sometimes it seems short and wide, some others long and thinner. From the side profile, it seems that the intake ducts arc above and around the weapon bay to reach the engines, giving the plane a sort of a hump on the back. The intakes are strange. Yep, strange. The section seems to be an irregular lozenge, which is understandable for stealth, but they have a corner protruding forward like the diverterless supersonic intakes, like in the F-35. But if they really were diverterless intakes, you would see a bump on the side of the fuselage. From the mock-up and the renders, they don't seem to have a slot either to avoid the ingestion of the boundary layer. Pictures of wind tunnel tests, though, seem to feature striped intakes. I don't believe they will look like this on the final plane because it seems a relatively inefficient configuration albeit they seem quite stealthy indeed. The vertical stabilizers are quite small for such a large plane, the reason being probably that they will increase the surface in the final design, like it always happens. Designers tend always to be very optimist with the vertical tail planes and they are often proved wrong. The tail design is very interesting too, there seems to be no thrust vectoring, but for the first time in a European design the exhaust is shrouded to reduce the infrared signature, particularly if seen from below. 
Very interesting is the small tail cone that seems to house a Bradoom, a design that seems derived from the Russian school. I suspect the plane might have a smaller radar for tail surveillance and target acquisition, making the over-the-shoulder missile launch much more precise and lethal. Rolls-Royce is going all-in with the Tempest engine. If they manage to do just half of what they are trying to do, they will have done a miracle. But let's see this cool clip from the Rolls-Royce marketing that explains everything about it. The power generation and thermal balancing will be critical. The plane will be literally bursting at the seams for the devices that use electricity and produce heat. The engine will have an integrated power generation. Unconfirmed information reports that the magnets for the power generation will be placed on the tip of the compressor blades, turning the engine into a giant dynamo while saving weight and mechanical complexity. Finally, I have to confess, I did not understand the plan to use the turbine as a heat sink. It seems definitely counterintuitive for me, but it is probably just me. We will see when we will have more information. The list of new technologies that are going to be included in the plane is long, very long. So since the video is already quite long, let's just make a list. Next generation flight control system. Mm, okay. Scalable autonomy. This means that the plane will have different modes ranging from piloted, remotely piloted to optionally manned. This is totally feasible, even if it is a bit difficult to understand how it could be useful. A mission can be very risky, so no pilot, but also very important, because you're risking a tempest. But if it is very important, maybe you can also risk a pilot, because nobody is thinking that the plane is more effective without a pilot, right? Adaptable physical architecture. Finally, finally someone that does this. This means that the plane will be able to change the physical configuration for different missions or different customers. 
You prefer a larger weapons bay? Okay, let's just remove a fuel tank. Do you want to replace the radar with a different one? No problem, plug and play. Do you want to install external pylons? Please feel free, it's already prepared. You don't care about start, just add conformal tanks to increase the range. Virtual cockpit. The cockpit will be replaced by a group of touch screens. There will be no physical switch or instrument. It will be complemented with virtual reality and augmented reality. It will accept gesture and vocal commands and the pilot will wear gloves with haptic feedback. It's basically like a PlayStation. So this is so cool, but is it really necessary? I understand the augmented reality, but what is the advantage of removing cloche and throttle? What is the advantage of removing some analog backup instruments? Advanced integrated sensors. It basically means it will work like the F-35 with all the sensors integrated in a single presentation. Effectors. Effector is the new politically correct name for weapons. The plane will have an integrated electronic warfare suite and it will be designed to use the high electrical power available to jam the opponent's sensors. This means that with the Tempest there will probably be no need to use any specialized platform for electronic warfare. The power that typically these platforms absorb to jam the, the ground radar or any other powerful radar it will be available on the plane directly. It may feature also direct energy weapons or lightweight interceptor missiles to defend itself against air-to-air -air missiles. Plus, it will integrate all the usual range of weapons already in use and obviously those in development. Lanka. No, not this one, nothing to do. This is the most interesting and bizarre element of the program. With the Tempest, uh, Biosystem is developing a family of UCAVs called Lanka, the lightweight, affordable, novel combat aircraft. This seems to be already in an advanced state of development and they will be available well before the Tempest. However, the Tempest will be able to coordinate a group of Lankas and use them in a way similar to the Boeing Loyal Wingman. They will have performances similar to the actual plane and they will be configurable for a range of missions like reconnaissance, electronic warfare or even ground attack in their combat, which is definitely ambitious. However, I'm sure that we all hope that they will change the name before the final release. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you did, I'm sure you will enjoy even more the videos that are going to appear beside me in the meanwhile. Please uh, like this, like, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. If you could consider supporting the channel on Subscribestar or Patreon, you will have my gratitude forever. In the meanwhile, thank you very, very, very much for watching. Stay safe and see you the next time.